My name is Sherry, and today you have come into my studio, Sherry's Cards, and I am going to be making a card for you today, or showing you how to make it if you want to make it at home. Um, you can buy all of the materials that you need. I will link all of the um, supply list down underneath this video, so you can go to my website and you can buy all of the supplies that you need there. And then you can come back and watch this video and make your own because you're going to love it. It's a really bright and cheery summery card. I'm going to be using a new bundle from Stampin' Up. It's called Bloom and Grow. And it's got some great sayings. It's very floral. But um, I'm going to use it today. When I first saw it, it kind of reminded me of a stained glass. Kind of a retro 70s kind of stained glass look. So that's the um, way I'm going to kind of go for the card today. I'm going to use the sentiment, you are simply wonderful. So it could be a birthday, a thank you, and a thinking about you, but it does have a wedding sentiment, uh, one that says let's celebrate you, again, that could be for anything, and a thank you. It's got some really fun fonts in it too, which are always nice to have. So there are a couple of different new things that we're going to use on today's card. One is the pigment sprinkles, and I'm going to show you how I'm using them so I can get them out of the way. They come in a box, and there are six colors. They are similar to the brush that we had before, but these, what's fabulous about them is that they are in six of Stampin' Up! colors, and they are in the Brights family. So you can get the Brights cardstock, the Brights ribbons, things that are in the Brights family, and you know they're gonna match. So I have taken, I've got it up here in case my cat, because if you watch me, you know, I, both of them like to come, he's crying right now, because I'm not going outside. He thinks it's time to go outside and swim. He doesn't swim. He just likes to watch me when I do. Um, Branson, stop. He's just whining. Um, so this is our largest stamp block. And I have taken, actually it's still got brush and names on the bottom. But I thought, I still have my brush on. I might use them. So I didn't want to wash them all the way off. But I just wrote the name. So we have Mambo, Granny Apple Green, Mango, Daffodil, Grape, and Bermuda. And they're just written on with a Sharpie. And then if you want to take a um, hand sanitizer or a magic eraser, you can just wipe them off. But I've pretty much dedicated this block to using for this purpose since I've had it. So the, the pigment sprinkles have little colors on the lids and then they have these little flip up things that you just flip up so um, you just need a tiny tiny bit I've already made this card this will be the third time let me kind of show you and I barely 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 put any um, pigment sprinkles up there because you're gonna see as I use it you hardly need any so I'm just gonna that much more of the mambo and it will be plenty like when we do it at camp I will just put some pigment sprinkles on there for the girls and we probably won't even need to add any more. And the trick to really making this card beautiful is to you it's a less is more. If you put too much on, it's gonna look gunky. And nobody wants a gunky stained glass. You want it to look pretty. So we'll move this out of the way. And again, it's good to keep this because the pigment sprinkles a little goes a long way. And if you get it on you or you get it on your table or you get it on another card, it's gonna go a long way to make that not happy. Um, so just keep it kind of up out of the way. That's why I've got it sitting here on my cup. We'll just keep that over here out of the way. So then to stamp, um, let's see, we've got, this is going to be the main sentiment and it was hard to pick and I just went with the one, there's three different main like flower swags in this set and I went with the one that I thought I could get the most colors on. That's the only way I picked it because they would all be equally beautiful. And if I wasn't rushed for time today, I might have stamped all three and then painted all three and then seen which one I liked the best. So I've just got the memento. You could use stays on. Stamp this one. And then they do have in the set um, four little flowers. And I just mounted them all on the one block together because it's the fastest way to stamp them because each of these also has a die. So we don't have to cut them out. Just stamp these here. And then I'm gonna stamp them once up more up here. I'm gonna flip them around just so they're kind of, that way, um, we'll know my dies don't really touch each other. So I've got those. And then I have, this piece here is going to be the background of my card. And I've actually trimmed it a little bit smaller than my original card. So 
so I haven't made, I've made the full card once, and I like my background of it, and I wanted a little bit more of it to show. So hopefully this looks good when we're done, because I have made it a little smaller. And this says, you are simply wonderful, again in a beautiful font. So there's that. And that's all of the stamping that we need. So I can get this out of the way. And then we'll do all of our big shot. All of our die cutting. So we're gonna use a couple of different things on this. First we're just gonna drag all my scrap bits over with me that are under my machine. Okay, see this is why I want this completely out of the way. And I've got my eye iPhone cord here. Okay, so I'm going to take my scissors because here's the deal. When you do a lot of die cutting, um, you can cram it all on here at once and you can take, you know, a few seconds to kind of line it all up. Or you can um, do one at a time like I'm going to do now. And then when I get it lined up, I can just put the thing on and then there's no chance that it's going to move. Because you know how many times have you spent a lot of time lining all of this stuff up and then you put your top plate on and they all jostle a little bit and then you have to line them all back up. Here he comes. This is why my pigment sprinkles are not laying on the table because I may have a visitor in a second. What's up, dude? So the new Stampin' Up! dies fit really nicely. Here, let me show you a close-up. They fit really, really snug up around the edges. There's not as much... Mm, yep, here he is. I don't know if you would call it scrap. This is why my pigment sprinkles are not laying on the table. Branson, get down. That did it. He doesn't like those. So, I just think it's faster instead of... See how close, close they get? I think it's faster than instead of... Um, getting a whole bunch of them lined up and then having them all move to just do a few at a time. So on this one, I am going to go, I'm gonna do all four, cause there's four. And so that way we'll run it through twice. And because I've lined them up like this, the fastest way is to do in every other. So we'll just start with this one. And then we'll do this one down here. And then I'm going to be lining these up so that um, the stems, like I'm going to do a little swag and these are going to go out from the swag that I just stamped. So I want to make sure that the tops are nice and straight. So if the bottoms are a little bit not as close, that doesn't matter to me. Okay, now when you put these on, just hold it tightly like that those through. So we've got our first four. And then we'll do our second four. Mm, that's this one. So it's the fastest I think to do this because if I had that other big one on there, it's one more thing that I'm trying to line up and then I have one more big shot thing as well. So you're not gonna get it all on at once. And instead of trying to get it all, all lined up and all working, it's just better to do a little bit at a time like this and know that these are good and not try to get them all trapped in there and then have to reset all of them if they move. Now we have, now we've done nine dies. Knock those all into there. And then the last one that comes in this set, which is kind of fun, are these two little scallops. So I'm gonna lay these on here and just set these either side. Now you don't want these to go speed bump and it's, uh, it's an optical illusion because it's hard sometimes to put these on straight so lay them on and then just make sure it's not gonna go straight through your machine because you don't want them to hit. It's not good for your dies and it's not good for your machine. And that 
one's moved a little bit, but I think it's okay. Otherwise, we'll just do it again. Nope, it's fine. So there's a little bit of a scallop in on both ends. So that's all of our die cutting. And then what I wanted to see more of is one of our new 3D folders. So these are like what our dynamic folders used to be. So they're not quite as thick. The dynamic ones, you know, they're super, super thick. These are thick, but not quite as thick. So I'm gonna put this black piece in here. Now my card's gonna go this direction. So I want my bricks to go this way. You don't want your bricks to go the wrong way. So you wanna line it up on the Stampin' Up! line because that's the straight line. So if you send it through with this, which would be the traditional sandwich for our dynamic folders, you're gonna need a shim because these aren't quite as thick. And you know, Stampin' Up! is working on a new die cutting machine. And so it will work when we get our new machine, but it's not out yet. So in the meantime, if you would like, instead of figuring out a shim, you can buy this beautiful new plate. Isn't this fabulous? And now it's got cat hair on it because he just was up on my table. Um, so this is just a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see it. I'll do it once I get the other, once I run this through. So it's just a little bit thicker than the regular plates. Um, and it's perfect, it's the perfect thickness for any of our new 3D plates, which there's a whole bunch of them in the catalog. So, you know, it's $9.95 and it was worth it to me to spend it. And look how fun those bricks are. So here's the difference in the thickness. You can see it's just a little bit thicker, so you can figure out a shim if you want for whatever die cutting system you use. You know, you might need three or four sheets of typing paper, maybe five, um, to get this to bump up to that, or just spend $9.95 and have this. And it's pretty to look at, too. So there we go. Now the fun, the most fun part of this card is coming up. I have this piece of pool party here because... I'm going to use it to put these on to paint. Where'd I put my main piece? So I don't need these. I'm trying to get my pieces without losing my dies. So I should have eight little flowers. some little tips of when you want to use your pigment sprinkles to paint. This is an old Wink of Stella. It's old and dried up and to mark my old ones I just mark them with a piece of washi tape so I know this is an old dried up one. And then this is the Frost White Shimmer paint. And I have used this one a, a lot. Like these will last for a super long time. So you can use a paintbrush if you would like but if you use a paintbrush then it's going you're going to have to be really careful that your tip doesn't dry up. Putting this back in the lid um, keeps your tip from drying up. So I'm going to start. I'm not going to color all of this in for you. I'm just going to show you a couple of tips. Get this out of the way. Um, so we'll do a little bit of the greeny apple green. Okay, now I want everybody to think of what color a greeny apple is. Like a greeny, greeny Smith apple. They're yellow. So when you... Okay, you just need a teensy, 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 tiny bit of shimmer paint. Teensy, tiny. Remember, we're working with less is more. And we've done this a couple of times at camp. And the biggest mistake you can make is to get too much on here to start out with because it's really hard to overcome. And especially when you're working with the frost white, it will cover up um, your black ink if you put too much of the frost white. But also, don't be shocked when you're working with the grainy apple green, because the pigment sprinkles have different colors of pigment paint. Not all of them. The green is one. The mambo, I've noticed it's more straight pink. But Granny Smith apples are yellow. So you're gonna pull a lot of yellow as you work with the green. But you can see I barely, barely, you just wanna have just enough of the shimmer paint that you have a wet medium. And then you're just literally getting a, a drop of the pigment on the end of there. 
And then again, try not to cover up all of your beautiful stamping. And you're gonna do all of one color at once. So get all of the leaves that are everywhere because you don't wanna waste um, your pigment. So I'm gonna hopefully be able to zoom way in when I edit this so you can see it. So I'm gonna pick this one out. And I'm gonna show you, see, oh, there's a lot of yellow in this. See the yellow? And it's shimmery, but I want some green. So this is still wet. So go back over here and where there's a tiny little bit of this green is wet, just pick up another little piece of the green and then add a hint of shading. Like where it's got a little bit more green now, it will pull in some green. I'm not adding any more pigment because this is still wet. And again, up here where it's wet and not over the top of my stamping. Because if you go over the top of your stamping, all you're going to do is co cover up your stamping. So avoid where you, as much as you can, the stamping. Get a little bit more. And try not to get like all of this. Like you can see right here where I'm working, there's barely any shimmer paint. You don't want all of this wet. Like you're not going to make it all wet because everything's going to be dried up when you're done and you're not going to be able to use it. So literally just what's hitting the teensy tiny tip of this is all that you need to work with. And if you were doing it, you'd be going a lot faster because I would be done with all the leaves if I was doing it. So can you see? Like before where that was all just, and see, I hardly have anything on the end of my um, Wink of Stella pen. And then I've just got this here and just rub this off. This is why you don't want to waste either because everything that you don't use gets on here. So now let's do a little bit of grape just because it's really easy to see the, the grape. So again, teensy, 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 teensy bit if you get too much it just makes a mess and then you can see there's just tiny tiny drips of this that's all you want teensy tiny little bit I hope that my phone's able to focus on that and then we'll get a couple of these here and see that is a ton of grape it was a tiny tiny bit of grape now you can see why it gets if it gets on your table or if it gets on another project so I'm going to take that little bit of grape and work it as much off as I can. And the nice thing is, really, if it where it's still wet, I'm going to pick it up again. I'm not going to add any more shimmer because there's still a little bit of shimmer paint on my plate. But it really goes almost from blackberry all the way to posy in the shape, the shading of the grape. If you let it keep working itself off, and if you get too much. All it's going to do is cover it up and you're going to go from something that could be really beautiful to not. So pretend I colored all of the, the grape in because I'm not going to do that. Because like I said, I have some finished ones. So see here's where I start and then as it gets, it just gets lighter. So it does the shading for you. So let it work itself off. Okay, now here's a little trick um, that you're going to need to get, especially you girls coming to camp. To get your rose to have a lot of shading, you want to go from the daffodil, which are the little flowers, to the rose. So you want to do your daffodils. They're not really daffodils, but we're using the daffodil color. So pick up some daffodil and then color all of these little yellow flowers. The yellow doesn't cover up as much. So it doesn't matter as much as if you go over the, the black. Okay, so pretend I've colored all of those in. And now I'm not going to clean my Wink of Stella brush. And I'm going to grab some of this and go straight over to my Mambo. And so this time now, because these are, there's three flowers and they're bigger spaces. So I've got, a, this is the most that you're going to get at any one point for this project on here. So I'm going to start with a big area. And for these to get the stained glass look, 
you're going to do one of these little areas at a time. So it'll do this one. And you don't want to do any that are two together. And then we'll do this one. Then we'll move over here. And again, you're going to move it. Use it until all of this is pretty much come off. And then as it comes off, you can go back over. And you can see now that it's coming off because I didn't clean off the yellow. It's pulling a little bit of the yellow that was left on my brush tip back into it. And it, so it has a little bit of tiny bit of yellow and it also mixes with it a little bit just depending on how the pigments are left in my brush tip. It kind of in some places will make it look orange. So again, just a teensy, teensy, tiny bit of this, a little bit of this. And when it's full strength, it goes back to being Mambo, which I do want several of them to be Mambo because that's what my card base is. And you're going to think, if you've watched me do this and you're doing it, you're going to think, oh, none of mine's going orange. But you can see mine started out really, really pink. And then the longer I go, the more orange they get. So again, we're going to get one more drop of this. This will be the last time I show you. And then get a bunch of the pink. Come over here. That first one's going to be Mambo. We'll get another Mambo here. And then another one here. And you can see now it's starting to get in that where that yellow's and still in the middle of my brush because I didn't clean it out. Which also goes to show you that if you don't clean out your brush and you have some blue on there and you go to, I lied, I'm gonna do one more, just cause it's a little addicting. But if you have blue on there and you go to yellow, if you have the um, Bermuda Bay and then you put daffodil on there and you're thinking, why is this green? It's because you didn't clean this out. It's another reason you don't wanna have too much pigment sprinkles on because you have to get them out before you move to another color and then you're just wasting it on your scrap paper. And nobody wants to waste this beautiful stuff because it's so delightfully pretty. And I just keep going even though I just told you I would stop. So then when you're all done, if you feel like it's got a little, like a little bit too much, like if there's not enough Mambo, then just hit a couple of the places over the top. So again, then when you're all finished, just take it and squidgy that off. So I've made, this was the third set of these, and this is all that I have wasted. You don't want to waste any more than that because who wants to waste your pigment sprinkles on a piece of scrap when you could be using them for art. So let's mount our card together now. You also don't want to, let me show you this. You don't want to have anything that's left on here as you're painting because you don't want it to end up in here. You can see my lid's clean. You don't want to be putting pigment sprinkles in here, into here, because eventually this is going to turn a yucky color and you want to keep this nice and white. Um, so work it all off here and get it off of here. That's why I'm using it till it's clean as I paint. So as I dip it back in here, I'm dipping a clean brush in. And I have had this one since it came out. I don't remember. It, was it last year's um, holiday catalog? So maybe a year ago that we started carrying these again. Um, and I've used it. We've used it at class. We've put it in the alcohol markers. I've used it to paint. I've used it to stamp with. I've used it every possible way that you can use um, the um, shimmer paints. I love them. And they, they will last you a really long time, but they're great as a painting medium. Okay, so get that back up out of the way. Let's get our card. There's my finished ones. This is Melon Mambo. Let's put our black bricks on here. And 
then I have my little swag here. And I'm going to create a little swag that's going to kind of go off of here. So this I want to be mounted up. Some dimensionals and you can see just how pretty using the um, yellow mixed with the pink is and the different colors of green and you can go to my website and I will put some close-up pictures of all of this so you can see it close up now the rest of this I'm gonna kind of shove these under with um, just snail so there's two of each one and this is why you don't really care what your um, stems look like because they just kind of get hidden. So I'm going to do the matching of each one just so they don't end up in the same place. What's wrong, Bubby? Do you think it's time to go outside? Yeah. They're indoor cats. Where we live, you're not allowed to put your cats outside. So we have a fenced in backyard. So he, they are allowed to go out with me only if I'm going outside. <clears throat> he occasionally tries to jump the fence and then he has to come in the house. Get down. So I'm sure there are poor stray cats that really wish that they could live inside. In, um, because today it's 90 to 95 degrees out maybe. They probably wish they could be in air conditioning. But no, my cats are spoiled. And he's now, he's eating my scissors. They love the scissors. I shouldn't be um, talking as I'm trying to do this because I'm really not sure where I've mounted these now. What's wrong, Bubs? And I'm letting them go off the edge because as you saw, this is a much smaller piece of cardstock that it's going to be mounted on and then that way it will go over the edge. He's literally eating my scissors. And now he's dropped them on the floor. Sometimes I find my scissors all around the house because he's a scissor stealer. I don't know if you can hear him. He's taking them. Luckily, I don't need them for this card. So I'm just gonna shove this up a tiny bit higher. Just covering up my word. just for a little bit of bling or noble peacock um, rhinestones which are not the exact same color a couple of them are there's grape and granny apple mm, I'm not sure which pink this is I don't think it's mambo because it looks too light but they all they match well enough in fact you could just use the granny apple and the, the glue dot on there you could just use the ones that match if you want but I stuck them all on here and I thought they looked fine so just for a little bit of, a little bit more sparkle, we'll just add a couple of these. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I will put all of the shopping things that you need down below. I will tell you that um, this July, if you would like to be part of my Stampin' Up! team, when you purchase your starter kit, Stampin' Up's giving you an additional $30 in free stuff, which you already get to pick a lot of stuff, um, but you get an additional $30 when you the month you join and then $10 the month following, which the special's good for two months. Um, and I do like it with a little bit more of the, the brick showing. Oh, he's totally left my studio to carrying my paper snips in his mouth. So... That's why I have to have five pairs of them. So when he takes them, I have them. But if you'd like to join my team, I'd love to have you. Um, you have to be in the U.S. And if you're in Indianapolis, then you can come to our local events. But we do do regional events as well. And I have a really active Facebook group. I have a website. And I do online events too. So if you're not in the U.S., um, you get to attend my um, like my online classes and stuff where my um, demonstrator girls do. So... It doesn't matter where you live, but I would love to have you be part of my team. So, um, 
there's also in July, if you're familiar with familiar with Kohl's, it's our version of Kohl's cash where if you purchase this month and you're going to get some bonus cash to spend next month for free. So uh, we'll have all of that in the links down below and on my website, which is stampinonline.com. Everybody have a great holiday. Fourth of July is coming up. Um, we will actually be in Denver to see Hugh Jackman, which is our ode to the Aussie. Um, He's one of my favorite Australians, except for my family. <laughs> They're my favorite Aussies. Um, but we'll be gone um, from about the 4th until past our anniversary. So like the 15th. So we'll be, I won't be in my studio. I'm hoping that I will have enough content filmed ahead of time that I can have some stuff posting while I'm gone. Maybe, maybe not. But if you contact me or comment on the videos and I'm not on it. It may be because we're hiking through the Rockies. So everybody have a great um, start of July. Happy stamping. Bye.